Uh, so we're here at the uh, Internet and Politics Conference at uh, Harvard University uh, with the Berkman Center for Internet Society speaking with Chris Rabb. Uh, Chris Rabb, tell us, uh, where are you from? I'm from Chicago. I live in Philly. And um, what's, your, uh, what's your interest in this topic, in Internet and politics? Um, I'm addicted to the Internet, and um, I'm obsessed with uh, politics. Uh, I, I was invited here. Um, I know a bunch of folks um, who are associated with Berkman Center as well as uh, other participants. Um, it's a great crowd. And this is a great moment, I think, in, in American political history to talk about the convergence of, inter, uh, of the Internet, new media, politics, and civic engagement, to get kind of a, 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 uh, a diverse, you know, ideologically diverse um, and vocationally diverse group of people together to talk about issues in ways that I don't think are adequately discussed in corporate media and other settings where you can have practitioners, academics, technologists, activists. Um, so this is a pretty textured and, and um, in-depth conversation about what just happened uh, with the presidential election and what are some of the consequences and impacts, uh, real or envisioned, um, uh, on our country and our electorate. That raises an interesting question because a lot of people are talking about how momentous this election was and um, the the role that the internet played in internet and technology. Um, it, but is that is that has it really made a difference or like what what's the uh, real what's the truth beyond behind the hype as it were? Well, I mean, you would think that more people will have come out to vote. It, it, it was not a watershed victory for democracy in terms of. The percentage of people who could and should be voting, um, you know, who actually came out to support one candidate or another, um, the victory, while electorally impressive, was was not as significant as many people think it could or should have been. Um, uh, I dare say that if it wasn't for the economic meltdown, that we could still be counting the votes today. <laughs> um, and uh, I also think that. Um, it wasn't so much the specific technologies that made this a transformative campaign um, or election season, I should say, um, but the masterful integration of technology and, and innovation more uh, broadly writ by the Obama campaign. I think it was really the integration of now fairly mature technologies uh, because some of these things existed four years ago, but only a s very small subset of Americans knew about it and were actually had adopted them. So I think it was the right campaign at the right time with the right mix of tools and the right message and political landscape, I guess you could say. And, uh, where do you think the, um, the role of Internet in uh, politics will be in the next 10 years, and where would you like to see the role of Internet in politics be? Well, I guess I'd like to get it to a point where we, we have incorporated the Internet and other technologies so seamlessly into society and into our daily lives that we, talk, we, we reference it like we refer, reference home phones. Like, we don't consider the home phone a landline technology anymore because it's so basic, it's so ubiquitous, where talking about the internet is like talking about air or you know or water where um, it's just ensconced in everything we do um, I like it to get to that point in 10 years time it's entirely possible if if there's vast broadband um, access it's it's there's a, a democratization of these tools and access to them and the institutions that support them um, but 10 years from now it, who knows? I mean, it, it, it's so it's so hard to look that far forward. But I will say that maybe within um, the fir by the end of the first, um, certainly the second uh, term um, that Obama serves as president, that um, we may see um, a, a radical adoption of technology by government and by future campaigns um, that um, uh, will astound us today, perhaps, and be very socially acceptable at that point in time but um, because it's, it's you know every 18 months you know you're seeing something just phenomenal so I, I, I don't know if we're gonna if that technology and that integration of technology will change 
uh, politics structurally, ultimately I think that goes a lot deeper than any one set of technologies. Um, and I think that has more to do with campaign finance reform um, and electoral reform than anything else. If those are the only two things that the next president um, radically reforms, uh, then I think we're going to have a much richer and more representative democracy because we're still controlled by corporate media and the, the majority of Americans can't and don't vote. So I think if we change both of those things, well, it'll improve the quality of the information we receive in terms of media's uh, content and will uh, allow more people to be involved in more ways in the electoral process and uh, civic engagement more broadly. So we've, still, we've got the great new technology, but we still have some of the same old issues pervading today. Yeah, ultimately, uh, it's like what Marshall Gans said. You know, you can have all the tools you want, but if you don't have the trained carpenters, right, and the carpenters don't have a blueprint, you know, so what? You have this nice shiny tool, and you're just banging, your, <laughs> banging against the side of your head. You know, so what? You, you, need, the, you need all of the parts and put, it, put together um, within a strategy um, with, with the proper resources. And you yourself were a candidate for public office? Is that, were you yourself a candidate for I, the public office? Well, not presently, but I am a, a public official. I'm a half step above dog catcher in Philadelphia. I'm a Democratic committee person. I represent about 540 Democrats in my neighborhood of, of Mount Airy in Northwest Philadelphia, and I have a serving my first four-year term. Yeah. Congratulations, and uh, I, I wish you luck in the next step above dog catcher that you oh, go no, go no, towards. That <laughs> <laughs> <But thank you. laughs> and uh, this is Dan Jones for the Berkman Center for Internet and Society, and um, I appreciate you talking to us. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks.